Hello, welcome to fourth video. In this video, we will talk about scripts and functions. In MATLAB, scripts are stored code blocks. And we don't need to use the same commands again and again. We can store them and we can reuse them thanks to scripts. In command window, we cannot store commands. We can store the workspace with save command and we can reload the commands with load command, but we cannot store the commands. To store commands, we use scripts. And let's create a script. And to create a script, there are several ways. One of them is click the new button in from the menu and a script or you can use command and and shortcut for the windows it will be the control and n and buttons and also you can use the command window to create to create a secret the command will be edit my secret it's asking to create my script I say yes and I close the untitled one and here is I have a secret and I can write my codes into my script into in the editor window. And let's create a variable in the script. A equal equals five. To run this script, we can use the run button from the menu and the command executed the result is printed in here why it's printed because i didn't use a semicolon at the end of the line and let's write another command in this in my script let's say a equals not a we can say b equals let's define a matrix for five and six and there is another way to run my secret we you can write your secret name in command window in here i wrote that my script and click enter as you can see my script executed and I have a equal 5 and b equals a matrix why I see these values in here because I didn't use semicolon at the end of lines. If I use semicolon at the end of the lines, let's use one of them and rerun my script. Right now, I didn't see the A, I see only B. Why? Because at the end of the first line, I used a semicolon. The semicolon prevents the echoing of my secret and right now if I use a semicolon here too if I write my script again as you see I don't see anything in here okay let's use another command in here and this time C equals and 
let's use a function here which is the rent function rent function will return a random variables between 0 and 1 and it gets the sizes of the matrix to return as a parameter and let's say we want 3 by 3 matrix and let's run our command again right now I have a 3 by 3 matrix on C and as you can see the elements of that matrix are random between 0 and 1 that's good and when I, let's say A is 0, B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and C is run 3. Whenever we want that A, B, and C with that values, let's say let's change A is 9 or B equals 0 or C equals hello and right now as you can see in the workspace I have variables and their values after run my script again the values of my variables are changed why because in my script I use these commands and I didn't I don't need to you write these commands again and again when I want to reset my values I can use my secret and I can store my commands in a secret too right now we have a little bit of codes but if we have long lines of codes, you will see the benefits of the secrets. And here, what if we want to reuse some code blocks in the secrets? For example, what if we want to use these three code blocks again and again? We can copy and paste. This is the solution. But it's not effective there is a one way more and that way is functions in MATLAB we can define our custom functions like rent function which is built-in function to create a function we need to create we need to create another secret let's create a secret in here let's say edit and our function will be the random function but it will be the spatial random and i will give the name of my rand now it will ask to create the my rent file and I said yes yeah right now I have my rent secret which is its extension is n and to create a function you need to use the function keyword and you need to write your function name which is my rand and you can write anything in that function you can write anything you want in here and let's write 
the same things with the secret with the previous secret a equals 5 and b equals 1 2 3 and 4 5 6 and we can say let's end the function in here this is optional you can write or you don't write it doesn't matter it will work anyway and to use my function in here I can use its name let's see that my rand like a secret right and there's a difference you can use your function with parentheses right now we don't need the parentheses because we don't have any parameters but if you have a parameters you need to use that parentheses as you see the program is printing and a and B why because I didn't use semicolon at the end of the lines if I use that semicolons and if I run my function again right now it will not print again <laughs> and this function right now doesn't get any parameters and doesn't return anything we will use that function again but this time I want to you take care of the workspace you need to care of the workspace right now let's say a equal 9 a equals 9 and B equals 0 as you can see in the workspace a the value of a is 9 the value of B is 0 and after I call my rent function As you can see in the workspace, nothing changed. A is still 9 and B is still 0. Why? Because the variables in a function are local variables and we cannot reach local variables from anywhere except inside of that function in here we can use a let's say c equals a plus one we can use it and let's run my rent function function as you see c equals 6 why because I defined an a variable in my function and I can use that a variable in my function but I cannot use that a from anywhere except that function let's say this parameter d and let's run it as you can see D is created but in the workspace we cannot see D why because D is a local variable and we cannot reach D from anywhere else 
Okay. But right now, how can I reach a variable of function? There is some way. We can return some value from that function. How? For example, let's return d. To return d in from that function, we need to use some special rule. Function d equals my rand. In here, the d equals my rand means my rand function will return d as a return variable. Okay, let's add a semicolon in here. Yes, and run my function again. Right now, as you can see in the command window, MATLAB printed the answer. Why? Because my rent function returned some value. As you see in here, I used semicolon, but it will print it. Why? Because, for example, if you write here, A, it will print it. At the same way, if you use my rent, it will print the return value into the screen. Okay. If you don't want to print it, you can use semicolon in here too so you don't see anything okay and let's get the returned value to a variable okay. returned value is equal to my rent as you can see the returned value is 6 and as you can see in the workspace too, the return value is 6. And this way, we transferred some value from function to command window. Thanks to returning it. And right now, my function return only D. And the D is the double. Right now, my function's name is my rand. I want to create a special random. So, I want to create a random variable between 1 and 10. Then, I can create, I can use here a rand method run function I want to create 2 by 2 matrix and I can give a 2 by 2 as a parameter and I will use semicolon to prevent the printing and I will change the return value with a right now my function will create a random matrix which is 2 by 2 and its elements will be between 0 and 1 let's write returned value is equal to my rent function when you run it you will see that the elements of the matrix is between 0 and 1 to change this we can use arithmetic operations we can say 1 plus this will add 1 to each element of that matrix 
that random matrix and we can multiply that random matrix with 9 if you multiply this matrix with 9 the matrix will be the elements of that matrix will be between 0 and 9 and if you add 1 the result the elements will be between 1 and 10 let's look at it in here again I use the same command and as you can see the result is here the, the elements in the random matrix are between 1 and 10 you can use again and again you will see that the values will be between 1 and 10 okay and we see that we can transfer a value from the function at the command window or or the place that the function called and how we can transfer a value from anywhere to the function so we can use parameters to use the parameters to add a parameter to our function we can use parentheses after the declaration of my function name and let's say the sizes let's the row count let's say row count and let's say column count and right now we don't have to create two by two matrices right now we can create a special matrices for each time let's write here row count and here column count the previous version of that function is always creating two by two random matrices but this time it will create matrices according to these parameters so we can send some parameters to our function this time we need to use parentheses in here too and let's say 4 by 5 as you can see our function created 4 by 5 matrix and returned it to where it called And we can add more parameters too. For example, mean and max. We can limit our random variables with mean and max. To do that, we don't need to use 1 and 9 anymore because we have variables, we have parameters for that. I use min here and right now max minus min here. Let's put some spaces in here and here and here. We don't need to use spaces, but it will look better. 
Right now, I can define the limits of the random values of the matrix. And we can say the result should be between 1 and 3. And right now, as you can see, my random values are between 1 and 3. But there is something wrong in here. Because we didn't use parentheses in here. Yes. Yes, right now it will work correct. Yes. As you see, my random variable values are between 1 and 3 right now. But how MATLAB knows which number in here is which variable, which parameter in here? It's easy thanks to order. The first parameter in here will be the first parameter in here. And second parameter in here, which is 5, will be second parameter in here, which is column count. The 1 will be the third parameter and the 3 will be the fourth parameter. We don't need to use their names. The order is enough for us. And we can create more function in this file. Let's create function. We can create we can create any function. Let's say um, it will return. somewhere I will and my function name will be add to matrix and my function can get some parameters let's say matrix and mean variable it's up to me we can write anything we want and my function will actually I can write matrix in here too and I can say matrix is equals to matrix plus min and I can end my function so I can use this function in this file but in MATLAB you cannot use this function from another file or command window this function is callable only from this file and Right now, I don't want to add minimum in here. And I want to say A equals to add to matrix. And I can give the A matrix as a parameter and the mean variable. Right now, I will call the add to matrix with A and mean and add to matrix function will get A as a matrix and mean as a mean. It will add matrix and mean, it will assign to matrix and it will assign to matrix to here. And right now, I have added matrix 
and I will return this a matrix to the where the function called and let's run it and here again as you see it still works but let's try to run add to matrix and add to matrix gets one matrix which is we have returned value returned value is a matrix as you can see in here for four by five and it uh, wants me to send a min variable let's say two and i click enter and it will throw an error it will say unrecognized function or variable add to matrix why because this function is a sub function of this function and this function cannot be used anywhere as this file except this file and any variable in here stay in here you cannot reach the local variables of functions and you cannot arrive a in this function why because each function has its own local variable variables and you cannot reach them from another function okay let's try it I again use my ran function and it will throw an error the error says unrecognized function or variable a why because I don't have a variable in that function and, and let's say I have a workspace and in the workspace I have a B C and returned value what if if what if I want to use C variable in that function let's look at what will happen I can say a equal C which is 3 by 3 matrix let's write it and let's run it right now I have another error it says unrecognized function or variable C as you see in a function I cannot reach any other variables and outside of that function I cannot reach any local variable of that function so what if I want to use C in this function then I need to use another keyword which is global if I use global C in here I can use the C variable of the workspace let's look at and I'm calling my function again and my function returned me an empty matrix why I had C but my function 
didn't use that C, which is 3 by 3 matrix, it returned, it used an empty matrix. This is why. Because I created a global variable. That C was not a global variable. That C is a local variable in, a, in the workspace. To make it global, I need to write global keyword and C in here too. And right now I have a warning and the warning says the value of local variables may have been changed to match to the globals. Why it do that? Because I had created a global vari variable in function and it was C which is empty matrix. And if I run it in here, now I have a global C but I lost the local C which was 3 by 3. And okay, I have in here, I have it, C and that C is a global. Let's change the C equals 55. As you can see in here, C is 55 and C is global. Why? Because I used the keyword in here. And right now, if I use my function again, return value is equal to my random function, and I give some parameters, but right now I don't use, I don't need that parameters. I click enter, and my return value is 55 right now. Why? Because in that function, I have defined a global C. It checks the global variables. If there is a C in there, it gets that C into the function and it uses it. If it doesn't if it doesn't see any global variable named C in the global variables, it will create with empty matrix. But right now we had C and which was 55, it gets it and it assigned to the A and it returned to A to here and so return value becomes 55 and became 55. And this is the end of our fourth video. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video. Bye.